when I see good painting or good books or good music, I can see that primitive instinctive nature. Welcome to The Love of Art, the Periton Podcast. Here, artists speak about other artists that fascinate them, musicians, writers, filmmakers, actors, designers, in a very personal way. We believe that art belongs to everyone. As French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu wrote in L'Amour de l'Art, culture is not a privilege to be bestowed by nature. If everyone had the means to obtain it, it would belong to everyone. Born in Nagano, Japan, Susumu Kamijo has lived and worked in New York for more than 20 years. Influenced by Francis Bacon and Willem de Kooning, his paintings of poodles quickly attracted significant attention. In his work, the poodle becomes a clever device, a motif reminding us that Kamijo's subject is first and foremost painting itself. In a playfully meditative style, his work continues to develop in a way that surprises, provokes, and transforms our ways of seeing. In this episode, Susumu talks about Japanese writer Sakaya Murata, one of contemporary Japanese literature's most striking prose stylists. Her bestseller, Convenience Store Woman, sold millions of copies worldwide. Enjoy! I grew up in Nagano, a place called Nagano in Japan, like three hours away from Tokyo. And uh, it's a really rural area of Japan. You know, most people think about Japan as Tokyo or Kyoto, or like a big city. But I grew up in really uh, countryside. And I left there when I was 16 years old and moved to America. To be honest, I wasn't really in contact with art too much. I was just like an ordinary kid, watched a lot of anime, TV, and like play a lot of Nintendo video games with friends. So that's how I grew up. The thing is, why I grew up, there wasn't any good museum around. So art world is something that I never imagined that existed. You know, maybe if I grew up in Tokyo or something, maybe my parents could take me there, but there's no option to be in touch with art. In retrospect, I did read some book that's too mature for the kid. For instance, I read uh, Haruki Murakami's No Vision Wood when I was like 12. Instead of going to museum, my parents took me to a bookstore a lot. And uh, he would just like take me there and uh, pick any book you want. So I just chose the book that I think is cool, but I didn't want to be reading too much kids' books. So I picked read like adult's book. <laughs> yeah. My father liked American movies. I think all his generation uh, liked it. You know, they grew up after the war. My grandparents went to the World War II. So right after, you know, Japan was defeated by the United States. A lot of American culture came into Japan. So my father's generation, they watched a lot of uh, American film, like, you know, Sound of Music or... So he took me to a lot of movie theater. Watched like, uh, you know, 80s, I watched Back to the Future, Goonies, those type of uh, Hollywood movie. I think that kind of made me uh, start wondering about what's really happening in the United States and made me come here. I think it's really part of it. I think I first encountered art in college. I went to school in the West Coast place called State of Oregon. <laughs> in the 90s, there was a bunch of uh, second generation of hippies and their kids was in my school. So people trying to express themselves in music or poetry or writing. And I just happened to be next to this person who was into art in my college dorm. And pretty much I figure out at the end of college year that I can get good grades in art and I don't have to write any uh, academic paper, you know? I just go in there and draw, sketch models or do painting and I just keep getting good grades. So I decided to become art major. Living in the United States, you know, I was really craving for like Japanese literature. So I read as much as Japanese literature I could, especially reading your native language. It's so nice. And uh, I have more depths of understanding what this author is trying to say. 
So I first encountered Sayaka、uh, Murata's work、uh, in Japanese bookstore in New York and picked up this book. I think because I heard her interview on a Japanese podcast or radio station and、uh, I thought like this person's very interesting. So I went to bookstore and got her book. I first read、uh, the book titled Convenient Store Woman. It was easy read and I read it in like maybe a day or two. And、uh, the first impression of this book was, you know, this kind of question what does it mean to belong to society as somebody who has abnormal desire and how she can fit within the society? So its question is more like, what does it mean to be a normal? I mean, what makes her so interesting is that when she wrote this book, she was working in a convenience store. So she started working in a convenience store when she was 18 years old. And she kept a job next 18 years until 36 years old when she won this like a literature prize in Japan. And even after, I think she was still working in a convenience store. So she had some sort of crave about. Just being in the space and she just had to be there. So, convenience store、uh, became like some sort of bridge that connects her and、uh, the normalness, just like a society, you know. That's what she founded, the connection. That's why she had to be there for like part time working in a convenience store. You don't get paid that much, and everybody around her. Keep asking questions why you're working at a part time at the convenience store and you're already in the 30s. You know, you should get married, you should get a real job. What's wrong with you? But she just couldn't do anything else because she was so obsessed about the space and sound and the people walking in and you know, the sound of these items on the shelves or the background music they play. Convenience store is like her boyfriend or partner, and she loves being inside the partner. So she's obsessed that much, you know, just being inside. It's kind of like protecting her from outside world. She was almost devoured by this, this space, and she's inside. It's almost like a fetus inside mother's womb. Almost like it's for me, that's what I kind of impression I got from reading her book. If I have to sum up what my impression of Fushi is, is a beast trapped in a cute, fluffy animal. I think she represents me as a sort of punk rock、uh, that gives me some sort of energy to be creative and take a risk in whatever that invokes me, you know. So, I don't have to be ashamed with even I, what I think is a stupid idea. Or if I do this, how a u d i e n c e going to react to you or people around you going to react.、Um, she just like broke through these barriers, <laughs> helps me broke through these barriers. So, in that sense, it's like a punk rock in a way. Yeah. It gives me permission to take a risk and explore, you know? And move in any direction, like especially me as a painter, you know, that I'm working on and trying to not limit myself.、Um, I think her writing helped me do that, you know. When I started the Pudo series four or five years ago, it just happened to be the Pudo around me, so I started sketching them, you know. But more I do it, I found it, yes, Pudos are domesticated animals. That we all love, but in the core, they're still this primitive animal. They look fluffy and cute and nice, but I, I know any of you guys who live with Doc knows that instinctive nature of animals is in there, you know? So, in recent painting, I think that's kind of、uh, parts that I wanted to explore more. It's just not the cuteness of a dog, but what is this creature all about? That you live with, you know, you're so close to, but yet they still maintain this like a、uh, instinctive animal nature, like we all do as a human, too. If I had a chance to 
talk to her. You know, I would like to have a drink with her and talk about each other's life. I don't have any deep philosophical question about why she writes or why she writes what she writes.、Um, I just want to know how she goes about everyday life and what makes her excited being in the world now. Now she's a writer. That type of stuff. I like to be with friend with everybody. <laughs> I just notice, you know. I mean, I just want to be real and keep questioning what is real. And、uh, I guess it's all in Twitter. Like when you're talking to people, so I like to have good conversation with people. We hope you enjoyed this discussion with Susumu Kamijo on Sakaya Murata. Please subscribe to our podcast channel and follow us on social media at Gallery Periton, so you won't miss any episodes or news. See you soon with more artists on the love of art. <laughs>